My crochet peeps, you are not forgotten. Today I am bringing you a crochet video after months of no crochet videos. Hello crafters and welcome to my channel Crafters Autonomous. It is Amanda here. So between some health issues and my VBS videos taking way longer to get through than I had hoped, it's been so long since I've posted a crochet video, so I am going to end that and post one this week for our Tutorial Tuesday. Today we are going to be making a crochet headband, namely this one. Because it uses a granny square motif, I have named it Not Your Granny's Headband. So in this video, I'm going to walk you through the materials and the tutorial for how to make this headband. If you are interested in a written pattern, I do have one on my Etsy shop that I just recently set up, and if you go to the Etsy shop from this video, you, I have a special code for you. I have a special code for you that I'm blanking on what it is, so it's gonna appear like in text down here at the bottom, like right here somewhere. So if you type in this code, you'll get a dollar off this pattern. So if you don't wanna watch the whole video or if a written pattern helps you, that resource is available for you. But otherwise, we are going to jump into making it in this video. So the first thing we need to tackle, obviously, is materials, so supplies. I'm going to be using this crochet hook. You might be asking, what size is this crochet hook? The unfortunate thing is, I have no earthly idea because this is a really old hook, and apparently when it was made, there weren't like standardized crochet hook sizes. My best guess, though, is this is a 2.1 millimeter hook. I would recommend aiming for something around there. If you're a little bigger, a little smaller, it's not gonna throw the pattern off too much. So anywhere from like a two millimeter to a 2.25 milliliter, you should be good to go. And of course you can adjust your tension if you decide you want it a little smaller or a little bigger. Next we need some crochet thread. I'm using size 10 crochet thread and I'm using Red Heart for both of them. I'll have links in the description below for what thread I'm using. So these bad boys. And I'll have the colors linked in the description below. You will also need a hair tie. I like hair ties like this. I think these are like the goody ouchless ones. Again, I'll link it down below. You can opt for a neutral color or you can opt for something colorful. I'm gonna go with this funky green one just because that's what I had on my wrist. Once our project is all assembled, we will need scissors to cut off our tail ends and we will need a needle of some sort to weave in the ends. I will be using this guy. All right, so that's all we need in the way of materials. I will make a quick note and say that you don't have to stick with just two colors. You can do lots of colors, and once we get into it, you'll probably be able to see how you can change it up. I'm just gonna show you with two colors today, but that's another idea if you wanna try that. All right, let's jump into making our headband. Before we start, here's a closer look at how the finished headband turns out. This one's a little wrinkly looking because I wore it in the pool and it kind of dried weird because I didn't spread it out to dry nicely. But anyways, this headband is worked using five granny square motifs. So one, two, three, four, five. And then I'll show you how to join them. We're gonna work a border and with the border we attach it to the hair tie and then our headband will be all put together. So the first thing we need to know is how to make the motif. I make five for mine and it ends up being about 16 and a half inches in circumference. If your head's smaller or bigger, you of course can do more or less motifs. So the motifs are just a basic granny square and I'll show you how I do mine. I'm gonna start with my first color and make a slip knot and putting the slip knot on the hook. Then chain three and then slip stitch in your very first chain to create a ring. I like doing this because it creates a more open look at the center of our granny square but you can use the magic ring if you want. I'm just not a fan of the magic ring because I have a really hard time teaching it and I have a really hard time doing it and it kind of makes it tighter in the, in the middle. So once you've formed your ring, chain three and this will count as our first double crochet. And then I'm going to work two double crochet into my ring. And I like to work over my tail because that's one less thing to weave in and weaving tails in is really a pain to start with but it's extra difficult with crochet thread. So one double crochet and a second double crochet. All right, once we've done that, we are going to chain one and then work three more double crochet into the center of our ring. So the chain one is going to be the corner of our granny square and then these three double crochet clusters are going to be the sides. So one double crochet two double crochet, and three double crochet. 
All right, so we're gonna do what we just did another two times. So chain one and then three double crochet into our ring. One, two, bless you, Becca, and three. Chain one to create the third corner, and then work three double crochet into the ring to create that fourth side. Okay, once we've done that, we need to chain one, and then we're going to slip stitch in the top of our first double crochet, which remember, we called our chain three at the beginning, our first double crochet. I'm gonna slip stitch right in the top there. And because I'm changing colors every round, I'm going to fasten off. So this is our first round. I'll make a quick note and just let you know that my tension's pretty tight because I'm in a tight spot here on the camera to keep it steady. Um, but it'll end up being just a little bit bigger than this. The motifs are about an inch by an inch. So I am going to get my next color, make a slip knot, and slip stitch into one of my chain one corners. It doesn't matter which one, I'm just gonna put it in this chain one corner right here. So I'll work a slip stitch, and then we're gonna start working up. So to work, we're gonna work three chain, and we're gonna call that our first double crochet. Two, three, and then we're gonna work two double crochet into the same chain one space in the corner. So one, and two, And then we're gonna create a corner here, so we're gonna chain one, and then work three more double crochet in this very same spot. All right, now we're gonna just work in our other three corners. In each of our other three corners, we are going to double crochet three, chain one, double crochet three. So one double crochet, two double crochet, three double crochet, and then we chain one and work another three double crochet in that same spot. So I'm gonna do what I did in this corner in the next two corners. All right, so I worked three double crochet, a chain, and a three double crochet in all my corners. So the last thing I need to do is slip stitch to the beginning of this round. So that's gonna be in the top of that chain three that we let count as our first double crochet. And once more, we're going to fasten off. Then we're gonna take our first color, make a slip knot, and join it in any one of our corners. And this row is gonna be really similar to the last one we did, just we'll have to deal with this middle space. So in this first corner, I'm gonna start the exact same way I did before. I'm gonna chain three, double crochet two in this corner, one, and two. Chain one, and work three more double crochet in the same corner space. And then before we get to this other corner, we're going to work three double crochet in this space here. Now note that we don't do a chain here. We go, we finish with our three double crochet and we're gonna go straight to another three double crochet in between the two clusters from the previous round. Go right in there and work three double crochet. And then once again, we're not working a chain, but we're gonna go straight into three double crochet in the corner. And because the corner will work three double crochet, chain one, three double crochet, all in this same corner space. So two double crochet and a third one. So now I will chain one to create my corner. 
and then double crochet three more right in the same spot. And then I'm just gonna keep working this around all my sides. So in this next spot, I will work three double crochet. I work the corners the same way I've been doing. And then once I get back to the beginning, I will slip stitch to join and fasten off. All right, so I've worked my third round all the way around. And as before, I'm going to slip stitch in the top of that chain three from the beginning. And then I will fasten off. And now we say goodbye to that color. So you need to make five of these or however many you want to make to get your desired length. So the next step is going to be to attach them. I've already started attaching these other four so I could speed up this process a little bit and give you an idea of how it's going to look. So I'm going to be using the same color as we used for the second round to make my joins. Another note that I'll mention is I like to put all my slip knots from the end on the same side. I think it's just easier when I'm working the border around it because then I know where these are going to be and I'm able to work over all of them all at once, but that's totally optional. They don't have to be all oriented exactly the same way. Again, you might notice this one's a little bit smaller than this one because of my tension because I'm filming on camera, but if you use good tension, yours will all end up the same size. All right, so let's go ahead and join these together. So I was probably working this way. I probably joined this to this, this to this, and this to this. So I'm going to then join this one to the one we just made. I'm gonna to refer to this as the old motif and this as the new motif for when I'm explaining this. I'm going to start with my crochet thread and of course make a slip knot. And with my old motif, I'm going to attach it in the top right corner in that chain one space. I'm gonna come in from the front, yarn over and join it with a slip stitch. Once I've got it joined, I'm going to chain three. One, two, three. And now I'm gonna make my first connection with my new motif. So to do this, I need the bottom right corner of my new motif, okay? I like to come in from the back. You can come in from the front, however way you want to. I like to come in from the back, the one I join. So I've got these three chain here, and I'm gonna insert my hook from the back side to the front through this corner space. I'm gonna yarn over and pull through everything to work a slip stitch. So it'll look a little something like this. Next I need to chain two. One and two. And now here's where things get a little bit goofy. It's not impossible, but you just have to pay attention to what you're doing. I'm gonna start by yarning over and then I'm going to insert my hook from front to back in the same spot on the old motif where I joined. Coming right here. Then I'm going to yarn over, pull through one, so pull through the motif, yarn over, pull through two. So it's kind of like doing a double crochet, except I'm not going to finish it. I'm gonna keep these two loops on my hook, yarn over again, skip this double crochet cluster and come to this space, so with this two loops on and my yarn over, I'm gonna insert my hook from front to back between my next double crochet clusters. Then I'm going to yarn over, pull through one, so pull through the old motif, yarn over, pull through two loops, and then I'm gonna finish it off by yarning over and pulling through three. So to finish this section of the join off, I'm going to chain two, one, two, now we're gonna look at our new motif. So we went in that corner there, we're gonna skip the double crochet cluster and we're going to slip stitch between the double crochet clusters. You can come from front to back or back to front. I think I kind of change it up just depending on how I'm feeling. So I'm gonna go through, yarn over, and pull the yarn all the way through everything for a slip stitch. So it's gonna start creating this kind of gridlock looking pattern. So it's kind of like lattice with our join. Okay, so we're gonna repeat this process. This is what we do for the next, we're gonna do this two more times, I believe. So we're gonna start by chaining two, one, two, then yarn over, insert our hook in the old motif wherever we last worked, yarn over, pull through one, yarn over, pull through two, and then stop with two loops on the hook. Then we yarn over, skip our next double crochet cluster, insert there, 
in our old motif. Yarn over, pull through one, yarn over, pull through two, and then to finish it all off, yarn over and pull through three. Then chain two, one, two, come up to our new motif that we're joining. We're gonna go to the next open spot, insert our hook, yarn over, and work a slip stitch to join it. And I picked up some of my extra tails. Let's get rid of those. Like I said, tails are really pesky, aren't they? All right, so we're gonna do a slip stitch through that next space right there. Yarn over and pull it through everything. Okay, we're gonna repeat this process one more time. I'll show you again. Start by chaining two. Yarn over, insert the hook in the old motif where we last worked. Yarn over and pull through one. Yarn over and pull through two. And that's enough for that spot. Then we're gonna yarn over again, insert in our next space, which this time it's going to be in the chain one space of our corner. Yarn over, pull through one. Yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, pull through three. Chain two. And connect it in the next space of our new motif. So again, this time we're in the corner. All right, so now we've worked basically all the way across. We just need to make a flat side here. So we're going to chain three. One, two, three. And slip stitch in that same spot where we last worked in the old motif. And that is how we work the joint. So it's a little confusing at first, but once you get the hang of it, it's really not that bad. So normally when we join, we would fasten off at this point and we move on to the next join. So when we joined one and two, we fastened off. Join two and three, fasten off. Join three and four, fasten off. But when we join four and five, we don't fasten off because now we're going to work the first round of our border. So I'm gonna take this and I'm just gonna rotate it kind of sideways like this. And I'm gonna start working along this side. So once you get past the join, we're past the hard stuff. So border is pretty simple. I'm going to start by chaining three. One, two, three. And in the same spot, I'm gonna work a double crochet. So this is going to count as two double crochet in this spot. Then chain two. Skip the next cluster and work two double crochet between the following two clusters. Come on right there and work two double crochet. Chain two. Go to our next spot between clusters and work two double crochet. One and a two. So that's how we work along the sides of the motifs. When we get to the corner, it might look a little different, but really we're doing the exact same thing. So chain two and work two double crochet right into the corner. One and a two. Again, chain two. And then we're gonna skip this stuff here, this chain, and we're gonna work in the corner of our next motif. So really it's the same process where we do two double crochet, two chain, but it's just a matter of what we're skipping. So if we're working alongside a motif, we're going to skip the double crochet clusters. If we're working over our join section, we're just gonna skip where we joined. So chain two double crochet in the next space between clusters. And we're gonna do this all the way down until we reach the corner. So work to the corner and I will meet you there. Okay, so I've worked along the side and my next spot is the corner. So as normal, I will chain two and then I'm gonna work two double crochet in the corner. Now we've gotta work a little bit extra to get around the corner. So once we've worked our two double crochet in the corner, we will chain three, one, two, three, and then work two more double crochet in the corner. And so this just helps us get around the edge there. And then once we finish the corner, we're back to working along a side. Gonna work the side the same way, just alternating between chain twos 
and double crochets. And then in the corners, I'm going to work two double crochet, chain three, and then another two double crochet. So work those all the way around until you get back to where we first started this border. So I've gone all the way around. The last thing I need to do is do two more chains and then slip stitch in the top of my first stitch to join. Now we are going to fasten off, which if you're anything like me, every time I say that you kind of just die a little inside because that means yet another tail to weave in. I'm so sorry. I'll also note that if you are into blocking your projects, this would be the point at which to block because we are next going to be adding the pony holder onto it and then at that point it'll start kind of connecting like this and it'll be a lot harder to block. So if you want to block, block it now. I think it's okay if you don't block it. It kind of stretches out and has some play to it so it works out when you're actually wearing it. But what we need to do now is we need to create these corner pieces, these corner pieces that are going to join onto the pony holder. And it's actually really simple. It's mostly just chains and slip stitches. So we're gonna come to either end of our headband, so the short end. What we do on this side, we're gonna do the exact same thing on the next side. So it doesn't matter which side you pick. I'm just gonna start here. And with our secondary color, go ahead and make a slip knot and then slip stitch it to the top right corner to join it. When I say top right corner, I mean right in here. Now you can go straight through it or you can go in the actual stitching itself. I personally like to go actually into the stitch and go ahead and work my join there because I think it blends it all together better versus working into the space there. But it's kind of just a matter of preference. It's not gonna make a huge difference. Okay, so we're gonna work several rows here. We're gonna work about five rows. First row, we're going to, once we're joined, we're going to chain four, two, three, four. And then we're going to find our next two double crochet and slip stitch between them. So I'm gonna come in right there, all the way through to the other side, yarn over and pull through everything to work that slip stitch. So we'll get a little bump like that. And then we're gonna do it again. Chain four, two, three, four. Go to my next two double crochet and work a slip stitch right between them. We're gonna do this three more times. So work four chains, slip stitch between the double crochet, four chains, slip stitch between the double crochet, and for our fifth one of these, we're going to again do four chain, one, two, three, four, but instead of working between two double crochet, we're gonna work in the space. Again, you can either go in the chain space itself or you can work in the stitching. I'm gonna work in the stitching just to blend it all together a little better. So that is our first row. For our second row, we are going to chain two and then turn our work. And then this last bump here, all the way to the right from our previous row, insert into the middle of it Yarn over and work a slip stitch. Whoop. Yarn over and work a slip stitch. And then we're going to work four chain slip stitch bumps all the way across until we get to the last one. So in our first row, we had five of these bumps. In this row, we will have four. So chain four, slip stitch in the previous bump of chains from the previous row. Chain four, slip stitch in the chain four bump from the previous row, so that's twice now. One, two, three, four chains, slip stitch in the next little bump. And for our fourth one, we will chain four, three, four, and slip stitch in the top of that last one. Okay, so rows three and four are going to be basically like we just did, where at the start of the row, we chain two, turn our work, slip stitch in the last bump from the previous row, and then we work the chain four bumps across, working one less each time, and we're gonna do the same process for rows three and four, and then I'll show you what we do in row five when we join to the pony holder. All right, so we just did our first four rows, and on the fifth row, we're gonna join it to our hair elastic. 
So we're gonna start the same way where we chain two and then turn our work and slip stitch into the last bump from the previous row. But instead of working four chains, we're going to work four single crochet around our pony holder, or our elastic. So to do this, I like to hold the thread kind of over the hair tie, and I'm gonna come under hair tie, yarn over and kind of pull it to the front, like that, yarn over and pull it through both loops. And that's how I work the single crochet. So I'm gonna to come to the front, grab it and pull it forward, yarn over and pull through two. So I'm just working single crochet around the pony holder and I'm gonna work four single crochet. Once I have worked four single crochet, I'm going to slip stitch in the second bump of my fourth row. So right there, put my hook through there, yarn over and pull through for a slip stitch. Now the first time you do this, once you get to this point, we are going to fasten off. However, when you get to that point on the second side, don't fasten off. So I'm gonna work most of the same triangle piece on the opposite side, and I'll show you some tips for getting this to turn out well. So I'm gonna, again, join in this corner and work the same process we did here. All right, so I've worked the first four rows of this triangle piece, and I'm on to the fifth row. So I'm gonna work it the same way where I chain two, turn my work, and slip stitch in that spot right there. And now I'm going to work the four single crochet into my hair elastic. Really important here though that it's not twisted up because if I attach it like this, then I'm gonna have a twist either in my headband or in the pony holder, and either way that's not gonna be very nice. So I'm gonna spread it out and I'm gonna kind of fold it back under like this. Kind of fold it in half. That's a really easy way to make sure it's lined up well. And then once you have it lined up and you're positive there's no twist in it, then work your four single crochet around the hair elastic. So one, two, three, and four. And then we'll slip stitch in that second bump from our previous row. All right, so this is the point where I said we don't fasten off because now we're going to work one more round of our border. So the way we're working the border is we're basically just working single crochet evenly around. So we're going to start by chaining one and then everywhere there's a chain space, we're gonna work two single crochet and then we'll work one single crochet in every double crochet. So right here, this counts as a chain space. So I'm gonna work two, two single crochet into here one, and then two. My next chain space, work two single crochet. Next chain space, work two single crochet. Work two more single crochet right in here. This is a chain space. This one you can either work one or two. I'm gonna work two just to fill it in really well. And I'm at a double crochet, so I'm just gonna work one single crochet in every double crochet. And then we're back to a chain space, so I'm gonna work two single crochet in the chain space. And then when I hit the double crochet, I'll just work evenly. And I'm gonna work this all the way around and we are going to work over the single crochets where we attach to the hair elastic. So I'll show you that next. All right, so I've been single crocheting around this edge and I'll show you what I mean by we're going to single crochet over the single crochet where we join. So I still need to work single crochet in this chain space. I'm gonna work two here. And then on the top of each of these stitches, where I worked around the elastic, I'm going to work a single crochet in each of them. So it will stick up a little bit, but you don't really notice it, and I think it just gives it a nice crisp 
edge to the whole thing. You could also opt to do slip stitches over these single crochets on the elastic. But I just kept with single crochet just for the sake of simplicity. So it's kind of like that. And then I'm back to working single crochet along this other side and once I get to where I started with these single crochet, I will join with a slip stitch and then I will fasten off. All right, so I've been working my border around and I am back to where I started. So I'm just going to slip stitch in that very first one I did. And then yarn over and fasten off. At this point, we are super close to being done. The last two items are, we can do this optional cover piece on our elastic like I have here, and then we have to weave in our ends. So let's start with the cover piece, and then we'll weave in all those ends. I'm gonna start with my desired color and make a slip knot. Probably didn't see that coming. And put it on our hook. And basically, I'm going to work single crochet around this elastic. So I'm gonna work it around both sides of the elastic. So I'm gonna hold it so my yarn is coming over the top and I've got the slip knot on my hook. I'm going to come underneath both sides of the elastic, catch my yarn, and pull it to the front, and then yarn over and pull it through both for a single crochet. So again, I go under and to the back, Catch my thread, pull it to the front, yarn over and pull through both for a second single crochet. And I'm gonna do 10 all together, so we gotta do eight more. And you can see they're kind of far apart, but I'll slide them together as I get more of them made. But I found that 10's a nice happy balance between it slides together and fills it in and it's not totally covering the hair elastic. pull through and fasten off. Now I have to kind of bunch these together and you can kind of let them twist. They kind of naturally do that anyways. I don't really mind if they do. Kind of slide it together like that and it covers up the little, that middle part there. I think it just kind of adds a nice touch to the project. All right, so we're basically done except for the tail ends. So I'm going to get my metal, my metal needle here and I'm gonna start weaving in these ends. I found out that a metal needle with a large eye really works really well for weaving in ends on crochet thread projects. So I'm gonna work on that. I'm not gonna include this part in the film because that'd be really boring to watch, but then I will show you how the whole thing turns out. And there we have it. Our headband is finished. Yay! Again, this one turned out a little bit smaller because I had pretty tight tension because of how I've got my camera set up, but I think this is super cute. And you still have plenty of stretch from the hair tie. So there you have it. Now you can crochet, not your granny's headband. I hope you guys enjoyed this project. As I mentioned at the beginning, don't forget to check out my Etsy. Again, I will put the code right here at the bottom that I can't remember what it is, but it's gonna be right here. You can type it in when you check out or it'll be in the description below if you just wanna click on that link. As of right now, I literally have just this one pattern on my Etsy store, but my hope is in the future to get a few more up there. So if you like written patterns, definitely keep an eye out on that. As always, if you enjoyed making this project, let me know in the comments below and don't forget to like and smash that subscribe button, as everybody likes to say. But now I finally have some more crochet content out of my channel. I do have three more VBS videos, but I promise once we get through those ones, we'll be done with the VBS stuff and we'll be back to all kinds of crochet and other DIY projects. I have a fun project coming with the leftover tablecloths from my VBS decoration videos. And yes, it is crochet related, so keep an eye out for that. I don't know when I'm actually gonna get that filmed, but fingers crossed. Thanks so much for watching and happy crafting. And I need an end clip. Ba -da -ba -da -ba. 
Hey, thanks so much for sticking around until the end screens pop up. Make sure you check out some of these other videos wherever they are. Another thing I'll mention is I have one of these headbands that I did using multiple colors and it turned out super cute, but I could not find it in time for filming this video. So keep an eye on my Instagram channel because if I find it, I'll try to post a picture of it, but I'm kind of concerned like, why did I have to go and lose it? Cause it's so cute.